This week we've been working at Tripcock Nest, which is just downstream of Woolwich in South London. Um, we've got a very interesting and a very challenging site here. Now, it's challenging because it's further out in the estuary than we've ever worked and uh, the foreshore surface is quite soft, access is quite difficult. Uh, it's very interesting because we've got the remains of a number of different uh, periods of archaeology on this site. We've got prehistoric peat, we've got the remains of vessels hulked on the foreshore and uh, we've got uh, a range of other sort of foreshore features which we're investigating. We're looking at four vessels here which have been deliberately hulked on the foreshore. They've been put here, filled with rubble, to stop the foreshore eroding away and protect the riverbank. Now one of these vessels is a normal, what we call a dumb lighter, uh, which is a, a barge used for transporting all sorts of goods between ship and shore. Three of the others, however, are a type of vessel we've not seen before. We think they're ballast lighters because they have this big hopper inside for uh, storing the gravel. Now what these lighters would do is sit midstream and they would by hand dredge out gravel and they would drop it into the hopper where a couple of chaps would shovel it around to keep the vessel stable. Once they'd filled up they'd then be towed to a vessel which had just probably unloaded with coal to fill it up with ballast for its return journey back to Newcastle. One of the other features on this site is a, a very large deposit of peat. Now that comprises a, a layer of material which has got large uh, bits of tree in it, so tree stumps, uh, fallen trees and we've also got some areas where there's some root systems showing through. Now we, we've looked at another peat exposure just downstream of here at Erith um, and that exposure has been dated to from the Bronze Age through to the Iron Age. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to take some samples uh, from these peat deposits, send them off to English Heritage and get them dated and see if we've got a, a, a comparable uh, sequence going on on this site. That's given us a list of um, features that she's discovered on the foreshore and she um, has asked us to locate them. So we're using this which is a global positioning system and um, basically it's using a satellite and a phone link to give us accurate measurements to about 20 millimetres. So we're going around and we're measuring in everything that's on her list and it goes directly onto the OS National Grid. We're here basically because I met Mike Webber from the original Thames Foreshore project at a conference and he said there's this cracking site at Tripcock Ness which really needs looking at. One thing led to another which means that we're now here looking at the former foreshore of the Woolwich Arsenal and specifically at a, what appears to be some sort of barrier that's been created using some sunken barges and some uh, monumental stonework, probably protecting a breach in the Riverside Wall because behind where we're working now until the 1950s was the, the Lydite factory which was an explosives factory belonging to the Arsenal. Very sensitive area, highly secure area and they needed to make sure that the foreshore was protected from erosion as well as the other 6,000, 8,000 years of history and um, anything else that turns up. It's uh, probably one of the most comprehensive sites in Woolwich where we've got a complete microcosm of the history of the Thames in this area. This has definitely been one of the most challenging weeks we've ever done on the foreshore. Uh, it's been a real uh, effort to get to this site, but I think it's been really worthwhile. This site's not been investigated in any detail before, so what we're working on here is completely new uh, and uh, 
while it's challenging, it's definitely going to be worthwhile. And uh, we look forward to telling you more about what we found on this fascinating site.